Hello, Rice Station Christian Church. I'd like to welcome everyone out to this Wednesday evening Bible study. I'd like to start off with an announcement this evening. Uh, this coming Sunday morning, we are going back to in-person worship service. And we would ask that everyone would please continue to wear masks while you're here and also abstain from shaking hands or bumping fists and things like that. Just give a friendly wave and, and howdy that way because that keeps from transferring anything and, and makes, it, makes us able to stay open uh, for Sunday morning worship service. But anyway, we'll go ahead and get into our lesson today. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever tried to move a tree that's strongly rooted in nature? If you have, then you know that moving a tree can be a tremendously hard task, especially since its roots can be dug down so deep. I've, I've seen some trees have to be moved by a piece of equipment because the roots are so strong and, and deeply uh, in the ground. Well, in our lesson today, we're going to look at some things that can help uh, that we need to avoid to help us be strong, virtuous people of God that we need to be. So the title of our lesson today is Live Virtuously. It's lesson two in our lesson book called Living a Life That Matters. Now the word virtuously could be defined as having a high moral standard. And let's read in the Word of God about us being the virtuous people of God that we should be. So turn with me in your Bibles or on your Bible apps to Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1, and we're going to read this entire psalm. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 6 says this, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaves does not wither. Whatever he does prospers, not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Now, in verse 3 of that psalm, we see that a virtuous person is like a strongly rooted tree by the streams of the water of God. The tree doesn't fall down when the storm comes. The tree remains standing through it all, bearing much fruit. Now, on page 12 in our lesson book, I'd like to read to you some things that it says there. On page 12, our lesson book says, Often, when Psalm 1 is studied, we tend to focus on the law of the Lord and the day and night meditation. Most Christians understand that that is a vital, it's vital to study the Word of God. But that often doesn't translate into them actually doing it. The psalmist begins by giving us several warnings, several warnings that can stand in the way of us meditating on God's Word and thus living a virtuous life as a result. So let's look at some things that we need to avoid that can help us be the strong, virtuous people of God that we need to be. Well, the first thing that we see is this. We need to be careful where we walk. Be careful where you walk. Psalm 1-1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. You know, that's a message that's repeated all throughout the Scriptures. Take, for instance, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15, and that's the great resurrection chapter, as, as we uh, should know it by. It talks a lot about the resurrection of the dead. But in 1 Corinthians 15, in verse 33, it says this, Bad company corrupts good character. It says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Now, if we look over from there over to Proverbs chapter 13, we can see the same type of thing repeated in the Old Testament. In Proverbs 13 and verse 20. There the scriptures say, 
He who walks with the wise grows wiser, but a companion of fools suffers harm. Now let me be clear about what I'm trying to say here. Jesus did spend time with people who lived wicked lives. He spent time with tax collectors and sinners. And he did so so that he could reach them, so that they would know that they need to come to the Lord. And the only way that we will reach people is if we go around wicked people, if we go around sinful people, and we go around lost people. The only, that's the only way we can reach them for Jesus Christ. But that doesn't mean that we should keep them as our constant company because bad company can corrupt good character. You see, if we do keep them as our constant company, then soon soon we'll start to see the counsel of the wicked penetrating our hearts and penetrating our minds. Or in other words, if we stay around wicked people all the time and we constantly have the garbage that they speak coming into our minds, then they will influence us more for the world than what we influence them for Jesus Christ. So we need to be careful, church. We need to be careful, folks, where we walk. Watch and be careful where you walk. Well, also, the psalmist says something else. He says, be careful where you stand. Let's look back there in Psalm 1.1. There the psalmist says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners. Or, in other words, be careful where you stand. When I worked in corrections, I was around some really evil people sometimes. Now, don't get me wrong. There were some people that, that was in that detention center and they were, they were just good old people. You know, they just messed up. But some people were really evil. And it was just common when you would go by the large cell areas, you would hear all kinds of foul language. I mean, just the worst language you could possibly hear. And it was common that I, when I would go and talk to my coworkers that I would hear some of the most foul language that you could ever imagine hearing. And I just got to the point where I just ignored it and just went on my way. Well, one evening, um, this was before my wife and I, we had children. One evening, my wife and I, we were sitting at home. We were watching the TV and someone on the TV said a horribly foul word. Well, you know, I didn't pay any attention to it, but my wife said, Joe, did you hear that? I can't believe they said that on TV. And I said, said what? And she said, they just used all kinds of foul words. Didn't you hear that? And it was in, those, in that moment that I realized that I had grown desensitized to sinful language. You see, that's a risk we run when we constantly spend time with people who love sin and they, they will constantly show that sin and they will grow spiritually we will grow spiritually desensitized to it. Then before long, we'll find ourselves walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Um, let's look at what we're told about this desensitization process. It's in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. So turn there with me in your Bibles. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians four seventeen through 19 says this. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality and so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. So Paul is telling us here that this desensitization process is a gradual thing, that at first one gets to hear and, and see these sinful things. And then that person's heart grows hard. And then they will want to indulge in that sin. And then they will indulge in that sin. And then that will result in them lusting more. It's kind of like the domino effect. Just one thing right after another. To avoid this from happening, we must watch where we walk. We must watch where we stand and who we walk with and who we stand and talk with. And also... We need to be careful where we sit. Be careful where you sit. Back in Psalm 
1, 1. We read these words. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seats, sit in the seat of mockers. Do you see the progression that the psalmist is talking about here? The psalmist is saying, at first, one may just walk along with the wicked. Then after they've talked to that wicked person for a while, they'll stop and stand and talk with them and listen to their counsel. And then before they know it, they'll be sitting comfortably with them, listening to their wicked counsel and their mockery of God. That's the progression we see in Psalm 1. So we need to be cautious in this world full of wickedness. We need to be cautious about the people that we hang out with. Because I know with teenagers, you would usually call it peer pressure. With adults, I guess you could better say, you know, people will try to get you to compromise your Christian convictions. And people will pressure you to do that. And we need to be very aware of that. Now, maybe you can't help that you're around people who are living in ungodliness. Maybe it's because you work with them, or maybe it's because you go to school with them, or maybe it's because you participate in the same hobbies that they do. And because of that, you are around some people who are wicked all the time. In those situations, we must resolve. We must resolve in our hearts and our minds not to let those people uh, push us into their mold. We must not conform to the patterns of this sinful world. We must be sure to stand for the truth and avoid sinfulness. And in those situations, after we resolve to, to keep our Christian convictions, and after we stand firm for a while, we will get stronger. And if we do stand firm to the end, we know that the Lord will bless us. As a matter of fact, that's what the psalmist said in Psalm 1-1. He said, blessed, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. I think a good example of this, of the blessed person who stood firm in the face of all kinds of pressure in this world is Daniel, Hanani, Mishael, and Azariah. Now, if you look in the book of Daniel, you can see that they first resolved not to defile themselves with the king of Babylon's choice food. And then, after that, they resolved not to bow down and worship an idol. And Daniel resolved to continue to pray. And we know that they were blessed because of it. You see, our desire should be to stand for the Lord all the time. Our desire should be to please God. Our desire should be to grow in the Lord as a tree planted by a stream of water. And when we do, we will be blessed. Another example of this is seen in Joseph in the Old Testament. And if you remember, Joseph's story is recorded from Genesis chapter 37 through Genesis chapter 50. Those are the events of his life recorded in the scriptures. And Joseph was you know, raised by a man who knew God. But then he was sold into Egyptian slavery. And could you imagine Joseph being in Egypt, surrounded by all this pagan worship and all these idols? But even though he saw this, even though he was surrounded by all this wickedness, Joseph resolved to continue to walk with God and not to walk in the way of sin. And we need to do the same thing. And as we know, Joseph was raised to be the second in command of all of Egypt because God blessed him for his faithfulness. And he will bless us as well. On the last page of Lesson 2, I'd like for us to look at the words that the lesson writer says. He says, Blessedness comes when we avoid the counsel of the wicked and meditate on the word of God. When that happens, we are like a tree firmly planted by streams of water. Yet too many Christians plant themselves in a dry land where there is no water. Maybe you have been in the desert as someone who grew up in Florida and now lives in Washington, I'm used to trees and lots of them. When I go to the desert, it's just weird for me to see no trees. There's simply no nourishment there for them. 
Don't miss the point. Christians choose where to plant themselves. If you plant yourself in the spiritual desert, you will be like chaff which the wind drives away. Yet if you choose to plant yourself by the streams of the living water, we will yield our fruit in its season and our leaves will not wither and whatever we do will prosper, as Psalm 1-3 says. When we choose to live the virtuous life, only then can we truly live the life that matters and the life that makes a difference. So I want to encourage us this week, apply the words of Psalm 1 to our lives. Meditate on the Word of God so that it will help you grow. Get that nourishment, that spiritual nourishment that you need. Avoid walking in the, down the wrong paths. Stay on that narrow way that leads to eternal life. And know that Jesus Christ is that narrow way. Jesus tells us that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through and by me. Now to live this type of virtuous life that God wants us to live, we first have to obey Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the one who left heaven to come to the earth to show us the way. Then he went to the cross And paid our sin debt, was buried and and rose all so that we could be forgiven of our sins and have heaven ahead and be in a relationship with the Heavenly Father. Jesus went through all that and all he asked from us is that we obey him. Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. If we love him, we will do what his word says. And his word tells us that we must hear the word of God. We must believe the word of God. We must repent of our sins. We must confess Christ. We must be baptized into Christ. And then we must live faithfully to the end. So if you need to make a decision to obey and serve and live for the Lord, then I want to encourage you, please give me a call. My number is 606-205-0549. May we take this message and carry it with us and live the virtuous life. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we come before you, Lord, and we praise and worship and exalt your holy name. Father, I pray for all those that are grieving. I pray for all those, Father, that are in the hospitals and nursing homes suffering with this coronavirus, Lord, and I pray for the healing of this land. I pray that you touch your hand upon this land as the great physician and drive away this horrible illness. Father God, I I most of all uh, pray for the sin sick, that they come to you before it's eternally too late. Lost souls need to come to you so bad, and I hope they realize that they need you more than they need air. Father God, we do thank you for Jesus and the cross and the empty tomb and all that you went through to save us and all that you gave. Father God, may you be glorified through our lives. Bless your church here at Rice Station. Bless the elders, bless the deacons, bless the entire congregation, Lord. And we pray all this in Christ Jesus' holy name. And amen.